Welcome to this Wiseal Report Builder tutorial. In this video, we're going to explain how to set up cascading parameters. We'll begin with a quick description of what cascading parameters are, just in case you're not sure, and then we'll give you a quick reminder of setting up basic query parameters before we explain how to make one parameter dependent on another. We'll talk briefly about the importance of parameter order when you set up a cascading system like this, and then we'll continue in that same vein by setting up multiple levels of dependency to create your cascading system. So let's get started. Here's an idea of what we'll aim to create in this video. This report has four drop down list parameters, which by itself isn't that unusual. If you've followed the previous videos in this playlist, you should be pretty familiar with drop down list parameters by now. The difference here is that not every single drop down list is available to me at the moment. I can't select a director at all, and although I can click on the drop down arrow for the films parameter, there aren't any items in the list for me to select. And that's because these two parameters are dependent on the earlier parameters in the sequence. So if I were to go to the genre parameter and select, say, the science fiction genre, and then select at least one certificate from this list, let's go for 15, when I click away from that parameter, I can see that I now have access to the director list. I still can click on the films list, but there isn't anything in it just yet. But if I do go to the director drop-down list, which is currently providing me with a list of directors who have directed science fiction films with a 15 certificate, let's select Ridley Scott. At that point, the films list is populated with all the films made by that director in that genre with that certificate assigned. I can check the box to select all of them, click the view report button, at which point I'll see some details of those films along with a list of actors and the roles played in those films. The lists respond to changes I might make as well. So for example, if I go back to my certificates list and include an extra certificate, let's go for 18, that will update both the director list and the films list. So if I go to the director list now, I've got more directors to select from but I've also increased the number of films available by the selected director. So I could select, for example, Alien again, and then hit the View Report button, and that one will be included in the output as well. At any point, I can go back to the start and just change the genre entirely. So I could go for a completely different one. Let's go for Animation, for example. I'll change the list of certificates. Let's go for All Certificates. And then when I click away from that, I've got a completely new list of directors for animation films with any of these certificates assigned. Let's pick somebody from the list. Let's go for Phil Lord, and then I'll get a list of films directed by him. So it's a fairly intuitive system for your end users to work with. It's a little bit of effort for you to set up. There's quite a lot of things going on here, but we'll build this up step by step throughout the video. If you'd like to follow along with the video, just a quick reminder that you'll need a copy of the YSL Movies database. And if you don't already have that one set up, you can use this video to help you get it installed. And there's a link in that video's description you can use to download the script that you'll need. If you've done that already, I'm going to head over to a blank report in Report Builder, and I'm going to start by creating a data source to connect to the Movies database. So I'll right click Data Sources, choose Add Data Source. I'll call it Movies, and I'll use a connection that's embedded in the report connecting to a Microsoft SQL Server. Then I'll click the Build button to get some help with the connection string. I'll type in a shortcut to my local host, so dot backslash, and then the name of the instance of SQL Server I'm using, which is SQL 2017. And then from the drop-down list towards the bottom of the dialog box, I can choose my Movies database. I can then click OK and OK again to create the data source. Next, we need to create our first data set. And this report is going to end up with quite a lot of data sets in it by the end of the video. So we're going to have one separate data set for each of the drop-down lists and another data set to populate the table in the body of the report. When you have a complex arrangement of data sets like that, it's worthwhile picking one direction to work in. So whether you start with the top level of parameter and create the data set for that and work your way gradually downwards into the body of the report, or go in the opposite direction. You could, I suppose, if you really wanted a challenge, start somewhere in the middle of that sequence and work your way both upwards and downwards at various different stages. But speaking from bitter experience, that's a pretty awkward thing to do. I tend to prefer working from the bottom level and gradually add each higher level of parameter. So that's the way I'm going to work through in this video. So let's head back to the report and I'm going to right click on my movies data source and choose to add a data set. I'm going to call this one film roles 
and then I'll use the Query Designer to pick a whole bunch of columns from various different tables. I'm going to pick more columns than I need just to begin with, but we will eventually use these by the end of the report. So just to save going back to the Query Designer too often, I'm going to go to the Tables folder and then start in the Film table. And I'm going to pick the Film ID, the Title and the Release Date, the Runtime Minutes and the Oscar Wins. Then I'm going to head into the Actor table and I'm going to select the full name from the Actor table. And then I'm going to just collapse the film table just so that I can more easily find the role table. And I'm going to select the role column from there. And one more column to select that I'd like to display in the final output of the report. I'm going to go to the certificate table and check the box for certificate as well. At that point, I'm going to click OK and then click OK again. And there's my basic data set for the film roles created. Next, I'd like to create a table which displays a list of actor names and the roles they've played, grouped by the film that the roles belong to. I'll start by removing my footer from the report by right-clicking and removing page footer, and then get rid of this placeholder title text box. I can then right-click into the body of the report and choose to insert a table. I'll just drag that up to the top left-hand corner. I'm going to put in the full name field from the actor table first, and then the role column from the uh, role table. And then at this point, I'm just going to delete that extra column at the end. And I'm going to apply a group to the table so that it's grouped by the film ID and then display the film title for each group. We've got lots of videos in the playlist in an earlier section which explain how to perform grouping in tables. So I won't go into too much detail here, but I'm gonna right click on my details object in the row groups panel and choose add group and then parent group. I'm going to choose to group by film ID and I'm going to create a group header. Then I'll click OK. That will create a new column with the film ID displayed in there. I'm just going to change the display of the film ID to show the title instead. And I'm also going to apply some sorting to the group so that the films are listed alphabetically. So I'm going to right click on the film ID group, which I've just created, head to group properties, then the sorting page, and then sort those by the title. I can then click OK. I'll just do some tidying up with the formatting. First of all, I'm going to highlight all the cells in the table and then change from the default font back to the default font, just to ensure I don't encounter the font rendering bug, which you uh, may have come across yourself when you don't see all the values you should be seeing in a table. Just a quick bit of changing of these column headings. I'll call this one film. I'll call this one. In fact, I won't bother changing that one at all. I'm going to type into the group header row just above the full name field. I'm going to type in the word actor and then above the role, I'll type in character. Then I'm actually going to delete the values from those, uh, those two cells there. So I'm going to select those and hit the delete key. And then I'm going to merge those two cells together. And I'm going to write in a new title in that merged cell called cast list. Right, nearly there. So with that table then selected, I'm just going to change its width so I can hopefully see all the uh, text on one row. A quick bit of basic formatting for the main table header. I'll give that a dark bluish purplish background with a bold font and a white font color. And then I'm going to highlight the actor and character uh, group header and give that a slightly paler blue, but also with a bold font. And then finally, for the title of the film, I'm going to make that bold as well, and then I'll leave that in white. So if I just run the report at this point, it should look reasonable, I think. We're seeing a list of every single film with the cast list for that film in the subsequent two columns. Okay, now we can get to work on the parameters, which is what we're really here to learn about. So to begin with, I'd like to create a parameter which will filter the list of films based on the film ID. And I'd like to be able to select multiple films from the, from the dropdown list. So I'm going to go back to the design view and I'm going to right click on my only available data set called film roles and go back to the data set properties dialog box. I'm going to head all the way down to the bottom of the select list. And then I'm going to add a new line into which I can type in the word where. And then on the next line, I'm going to type in a basic filter that's going to create a query parameter and a corresponding report parameter. So I'd like to check where the film dot film ID is in, and then in a set of round brackets, I'm going to make up a parameter name. I'm going to call it film IDs. 
So that's just to indicate that it's going to be a multi-value parameter. I can select more than one ID. Having done that, I can click OK and we'll see the corresponding report parameter gets created for me in the parameters panel and also in the parameters folder. I'll make a couple of small changes to this. I'm going to double click on the film IDs parameter and then I'm going to change its data type to an integer because that is the type of the film ID column. It holds a number, not text. And I'm also going to allow multiple values. At this point, I'm going to click OK and then I can run the report just to give this a quick test. If I click on the drop down arrow, I can type in a few different numbers. I'll type in one, two, three, inventively, and then click the view report button. And I should see a list of just the films whose IDs I've typed in to the parameter. Now let's create a data set to populate the available values of this parameter so that we don't have to just keep on guessing the film IDs. We can head back to the design view of the report and then right click on the movie's data source and choose to add a data set. I'll call this one film list and then I'm going to go to the query designer just so that I can select more easily the columns from the film table that I'll need. So I'm going to pick the film ID whose value will be used to filter the results in the film roles data set and then the film title to display that as a label in the drop down list for the report parameter. I can click OK and then while I'm here, I'm going to add an order by clause so that the films appear alphabetically in the list. So I'm going to say order by and then film.title. I could have just copied and pasted that, but I'm halfway through typing it. So there we go, film.title. Once I've done that, I can click OK and then I can go to the properties of my film IDs parameter. I'm just going to update the label or the prompt, I should say, so that it says films rather than film IDs. Then go to the available values page, choose to get values from a query, choose the film list data set, set the value field to the film ID and the label field to the title. Once I've done that, I can click OK and then I can run the report. And if I click on the drop down list now, I can choose to select um, one film or multiple films or all the films if I like. And when I've ticked a few boxes and click the view report button, I'll see a list of all the actors in the selected films. Just before we move on to the next stage, it's worthwhile mentioning that instead of using query parameters to get this system to work, we could use report parameters and dataset filters as well. Just to demonstrate what I mean by that, I'm going to head back to the design view and I'm going to go to my film roles dataset, right click on it and choose dataset properties. I'll scroll down to the bottom of the query and I'm just going to type in two dashes, two minus symbols, two hyphens to comment out the where clause and the criteria that we've added. So a couple of dashes at the start of each line. So that means that that data set will no longer be filtered. What I can then do is head to the filters page of the dataset properties dialog box, click the add button to add a new filter, and then in the expression box, choose film ID, set the operator to say in, and then head to the FX button to launch the expression builder so that I can select my films or film IDs parameter. So I can go to the parameters category, double click the film IDs parameter, I'll just need to make sure that I backspace the number zero and the parentheses to make sure that I reference the entire array of values returned rather than just the first element of the array that's returned by a multi-value parameter. And if none of that just made sense, then you might want to go back to the previous videos we've done on multi-value parameters. Um, but for now, if I just click the OK button a couple of times, we'll see that if I run the report again, I can still select multiple items from this drop-down list. And if I click the view report button, I'll still see a list of films and actors and characters in those films. But this is based on report parameters and dataset filters rather than query parameters. Now, in principle, if you have the choice to use query parameters, that's usually the best choice because your data is filtered at the SQL Server end before it's drawn through into the report rather than waiting for all the data to be loaded into the report and then subsequently filtered. So although you can use report parameters and sometimes you have to, you don't have the choice to modify your select statements. In this case, as we do have the choice, I'm going to head back to the design view, back to the film roles dataset properties, back to the filters page, select my filter and delete it, back to the query page, and then just remove those 
two comment out symbols, the minus minus or dash dash in front of the where clause and the criteria, and then click OK to get back to the state I was at before. OK, now we're ready to move up to the next level of parameter. So going back to the sample report, we've got our list of films populated. I now want that drop down list to be affected by the director that we select from the next parameter up. So to create that parameter in the first place, let's right click on the film list dataset. This is the one that populates this drop down list. So if I right click on film list and choose dataset properties, I want to um, only select films when the director ID of that film is equal to the value of a new parameter. So to make this work, I'm just going to add a where clause to my query. So I have to add the where clause before the order by clause. I'll add where, and then I can say film.directorID, and I'll make this a single value parameter this time. So rather than using the in operator, I'm going to say equals, and then refer to my new parameter name. I'm going to call it director ID. So having done that, I can click OK, and I'll see that my new parameter gets created. You might notice if you are familiar with the previous videos in the playlist, normally when you add a new parameter, it's added to the right hand side of the existing parameter. But this one's been added to the left hand side. And the order of these parameters is really important. The value we add to this parameter is going to affect which films appear in this parameter. So back in the, if I run the report, we can see that we can type in an ID number for a director. Uh, I happen to know that the number four corresponds to Steven Spielberg. So if I typed in the number four and then clicked away from that parameter, I might need to hit the tab key actually on my keyboard. If I hit tab, there we go. That has now updated the list of films to show films made by director ID number four, Steven Spielberg. And I can select some films from the list and click the view report button. I can then change the director ID. I can type in the number 27 and hit tab. And 27 happens to correspond to Christopher Nolan. And I can select all of his films because let's face it, they're all great. And then I can click the view report button. And there we go, we get a list of um, Christopher Nolan's films. Now I mentioned that the order of these parameters is important. And just to demonstrate that, if we go back to the design view and we try to place the director ID parameter either below or to the right of the films parameter, just by clicking and dragging it, you'll find that when you run the report, it no longer works. Um, the error message talks about the parameter dependencies. So the order in which you're going to select the values in the parameter sequence needs to match the order that they're displayed in the parameters panel. You have no way around that, that's the way it is. So just make sure that you don't change the order of the parameters when you're changing things around. I'm going to move my films parameter to sit on the next row down in the parameters grid and place the director ID parameter above it. And then when I run the report, I'll find that I can type in a director ID again and hit the tab key. And then I get my list of films again. Now let's create the data set that will populate the list of available values for the director ID parameter. We can head back to the design view and then we can right click on the movies data source and choose add data set. I'll call this one director list and then use the query designer to pick my fields. I'll just head to the director table and pick the director ID and the full name for the time being. And I'll click OK. I'm not going to make any changes to the select statement here. I'm going to need to revisit this query a little later on. And if I make changes to this query, it will mean I can't use the query designer again. So I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. Just accept the list won't be sorted yet. Click OK, then head to the director ID parameter properties. I will change the prompt to say director. I'll change the data type to say integer. I'm not going to allow multiple values but we can head to the available values page, get the values from a query, choose the director list, set the value field director ID and the label to full name. We can then click OK. We can run the report and we can select. You'll notice again, you can't select a film yet until you've picked a director. So if we pick a director, then the films list will be populated and we can choose all of that director's films or any individual film to see the detailed information. 
So at this point we have our very first pair of cascading parameters and the really good news at this point is that the basic technique we've used to set up this pair is essentially the same for each new level of parameter we want to create. The filters can get a little bit more complicated but not by much. So let's add the next level of parameter. I want to be able to choose a film genre. So just going back to our example, I want to select a genre and have that filter, the list of directors to only directors who have directed that type of film. So in practice, nice and simple for your end users and intuitive for your end users, I think. This one's a little more complicated to set up, however, because there's no direct link between the director table and the genre table. Um, it helps at this point to have a good idea as to the design of your database. And again, this, uh, this video here explains all there is to know about how the movies database is set up. But just as a basic demonstration, I've, I've created a quick, simple database diagram in SQL Server Management Studio, just to highlight the tables involved. So you can see that between the genre table and the director table, there is no direct relationship. There's no way to filter the directors simply by selecting a genre. I have to go via the film table so I can pick a genre. Let's say I pick the genre science fiction, which has a genre ID of the number three. So that will then feed through into the film table and show only the films whose genre ID is equal to the number three. That will of course also filter the director ID column in the film table. So I do see only the director IDs for directors who have made science fiction films. And from there, I can follow this, the other relationship out to the direct table to capture the director ID and the full name of that director. So uh, it's probably a little more complex to explain than it is to actually just set up in the first place. So let's have a quick go. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to the design view of my report and we're going to modify the director list data set. So I want a parameter to affect the results of the director list data set, which populates this drop down list. I'm going to right click on the director list and I'm going to choose dataset properties. And then I'm going to go back to the query designer as the easiest way to do this. So I'm going to click query designer and then I'm going to go to the film table and I'm just going to tick the box for the genre ID. So at that point I can click OK and you'll see that a couple of things have happened in the query now. We've added a join to join the director table to the film table and we've also included the genre ID field in the select list. Now, I don't really want the genre ID in the select list. That's not the point of including it. So I'm just going to highlight it and cut it to the clipboard with Control and X, and then just get rid of the extra comma there and delete the extra blank line. What I can then do is add a where clause to this query. So I can say where, and then I'll paste in film.genre ID. And then I'm going to say equals at genre ID. So I've just made up a new parameter name called genre ID. Now at this point I can click OK and I'll see my new parameter has appeared automatically sitting above the director um, parameter. That's messed my arrangement up a little bit so I'm just going to insert a new row in the parameters grid here so that I can drag the films uh, parameter down to the next row again. So just to demonstrate how this will work if I run the report I can type in the number three which corresponds to science fiction. I can't select a director yet, but if I press the tab key, now my director list is populated with directors who have made uh, science fiction films. You can probably spot an obvious problem with this one though. Um, I filtered my table of films for a particular genre ID. And as you can see, Steven Spielberg has directed multiple science fiction films as has George Lucas and James Cameron, etc. So rather than showing the full list of every single science fiction film and the corresponding director in this list, what I need to do again back in the design view is head back to the data set for director list, go to the data set properties, and I want to make sure that I select only the unique or distinct director IDs and full names. So after the keyword select, I can add the word distinct and that will make sure that I only see a single instance of each director ID and name in the drop down list. At this point, I can add in an order by clause as well, just to make my life a little easier. I can add an order by clause to the end of the select statement and say, I want to order by director dot full name. So they'll be sorted alphabetically. Having done that, I can click OK and then run the report again. Now, if I type in the number three and hit the tab key, 
I'll see that my director list is populated alphabetically, but I see George Lucas only once. I see Steven Spielberg only once, if I scroll down far enough. But when I select Steven Spielberg, I'll see all of Steven Spielberg's films. Now, at this point, you may have noticed another problem. Although we've successfully filtered the list of directors to show the directors of science fiction films, the list of films doesn't get filtered only for the science fiction movies. Currently, we're seeing a list of all the films in the database directed by Steven Spielberg. I'm pretty sure that Lincoln isn't a science fiction movie. Um, the same thing is true. You can see that if we change the genre ID again, I can type in the number one, which corresponds to the Western genre. And if I click on the director drop down list, that certainly looks like a list of uh, directors of Western movies. The problem is that if I select a director, let's go for a, a slightly different one, actually, let's go for, let's go for Clint Eastwood. And if I click on the drop down list of films, although some of these definitely are Westerns, there are also some non-Western movies in that list. So to make this work, we also need to filter the data set which populates our films based on the genre ID that we've selected as well. So we can go back to the design view. It's probably easiest to go back to your director list data set first and view its properties so that you can just copy the criteria that you've added in the where clause film.genre ID equals at genre ID. Once I've done that, I can cancel out of that dialog box and then head back to the data set which populates the list of films. Right click on that one and choose data set properties. And then in the where clause, I can add a new line start by typing in the word and, and then paste in that same criteria that I've just copied. So film genre ID equals at genre ID. Once I've done that, I can click OK. And if I run the report again, I'll go for science fiction movies again, so number three and hit the tab key. Select Steven Spielberg again, just to keep things consistent. And we'll see the list of films this time is much shorter. That's only the science fiction films directed by Steven Spielberg. Next, we can create another data set to populate the list of genres. So let's go back to the design view and we can right click on our movies data source and choose add data set. I'll call this one genre list. And then I'll use the query designer just to pick from the genre table, the genre ID and the genre. I can click OK. And while I'm here, I can add an order by clause to this select statement. So at the end, I can say order by and then I'll just say genre and then I can click OK. And then I can go back to the properties of this genre ID parameter by double clicking on it. I'll change its prompt so it just says genre rather than genre ID, change the data type to an integer and then head to the available values page, choose to get the values from a query, select the genre list data set. The value field will be the ID and the label field will just be the genre. I can then click OK and then run the report. And I've got a much more convenient way now to select the genre I'm interested in. Let's go for, let's go for Westerns and then let's select Clint Eastwood. And we can see that we get just the Western movies directed by Clint Eastwood. OK, so we've got one more parameter to create and that's to allow the user to select from a list of certificates. This one's really just to demonstrate that you don't have to make every single parameter in a system like this dependent on a previous parameter. So the certificates parameter is completely independent of everything else. Selecting something from certificates will affect the directors and then the films, of course, but I don't have to pick something from the genre list in order to select something from the certificates list. So let's start by going back to the design view of the report. And the first data set I want the certificate parameter to affect is the one which populates the drop down list of directors. So I'm going to find my director list data set and I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to choose to view the data set properties. Now, I've already got the film table in the from clause of this query, and that gives me access to any of the fields in the film table. So again, going back to the design view of my database diagram, I've got a certificate table here, which has a certificate ID, and I've got a certificate ID in the film table as well. And because I can follow an unbroken chain from one table through the film table back to the director table, I can set up this cascading system. 
So I am going to add another criterion to the where clause. So I'm going to just zoom in here. And after I've selected where the film genre ID is equal to the genre ID parameter, on the next line I'll say and film.certificate ID. I'll use a multi-value parameter for this one. So I'll use an in operator. And then in a set of round brackets, say at certificate IDs. I can then close the round brackets. Now I'm going to need to use that same criteria again in my film list data set. So while I'm here, I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard and then I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to go back to my film list data set, right click on that and choose data set properties. And then again, just as we added the genre filter to the film list, I'm also going to add in that same certificate parameter. So I can then click OK. You can see my certificate IDs has just been inserted in any old random order. So it's, it's appeared above the director um, parameter because that's the one that it directly affects. I think it probably makes a bit more sense for, in terms of the arrangement to put certificate IDs next to the genre and then drag the director back up to the previous row and then films back below that. So just to check that this is going to work at this point, let's run the run the uh, report and I'm going to pick the uh, I'll pick the animation genre. And I'm pretty sure that the certificate ID for uh, the universal or U certificate is the number one. So if I typed in the number one there and then press tab, I should return a list of directors who have directed films with the U certificate in the animation genre. So I can choose Phil Lord and then I get his films and then I can click view report. OK, now let's create a data set to populate the list of certificate IDs. We can go back to the design view and then we can right click on our movies data source and choose add data set. I will call this one certificate list. And then I'll use the query designer just to pick from the list of certificates from the certificate table. So I'll go for the certificate ID and the certificate can then click OK. The certificates are entered into the table in the correct order I want to see them in. So it goes U, P, G, 12A, 12, I think that's the basic order. So I'm not going to bother adding an order by clause here. I'm just going to click the OK button and then I can double click on my certificate IDs parameter. I'm just going to change the prompt to say certificates. I'll change the data type to an integer and I'll allow multiple values. Then on the available values page, I can get values from a query, choose my certificate list, select the certificate ID as the value and the certificate as the label. And then I can click OK, run the report again. So you'll see just to prove that I can choose a certificate before I've populated any other parameter. Let's just go for them all. In fact, no, tell a lie, let's go for the, the 15 certificate. We'll replicate the example we showed at the start of the video and I'll go for science fiction and that should give us, if I can choose science fiction correctly, I'll get there. Fantastic. And that should give us Ridley Scott and that should give us um, two films that directed by Ridley Scott with the 15 certificate, Blade Runner and Prometheus. One significantly better than the other and I'll let you guess which one I think is better. Um, if we can just add in an extra, uh, an extra certificate, I can go for the 18 certificate and then that will update the list of films to include Alien. Um, and then, yep, that's all working quite nicely. Now there is one potential problem with setting up a parameter which sits outside of the cascading sequence. It's perfectly possible for us to create invalid combinations of genres and certificates. So for example, let's say, let's say we change the genre to horror. I'll, I'll freely admit I'm not a big fan of horror movies. Um, I don't tend to watch them at all. Maybe if it's science fiction related. So something like Event Horizon I'll watch, but not a straight up horror film. Um, but let's try to set the certificate of horror movies to the universal certificate, family friendly certificate. Um, so fairly obviously at this point, we don't get any directors in the list. There are no directors in this database who have directed a horror movie with a U certificate. It's not a big problem. Your user can't proceed from here to select a director in a film, but it is potentially a bit frustrating if we give them the option to select invalid combinations.
So I guess there's a bit of a judgment call to make here. Should we make the certificates parameter dependent on the genre parameter? I think for this particular example, yes, we probably should. And just to demonstrate that we can hook this up into the same cascading sequence, it's no different to what we've already done with the, uh, the, the system we've set up so far. So I know that the director dataset is affected by the genre parameter. So I'm going to go back to the design view and I'm going to go back to my director list dataset first. That's the one that populates that parameter. Choose dataset properties and then I can select my film genre ID equals at genre ID filter and then just copy that from the where clause. I can then click OK or cancel, it doesn't really matter. And then go to my certificate list parameter, oh sorry, dataset I should say. Right click on that and choose dataset properties. And then simply add a where clause to the end of this query to say where film.genre ID equals at genre ID. Now you may notice a bit of a problem with this, that I don't currently have access to the film table. So I could, I'll need to add in the film table with a join. So currently I can only select fields and refer to fields in the certificate table. And again, going back to my database diagram, the certificate has no concept of what genre a film happens to be. It has to look at the list of films first. So before I modify the where clause, I'm just going to cut that to the clipboard. If I have that in there, I can't launch the query designer to easily and quickly select from the film table the genre ID field. I can then click OK, and that will now bring in the film table using an inner join. I can get rid of the film genre ID from the select list. I never need to display it anywhere. And then I can just add a new line to the end and paste back in the where clause that I just cut. So where film genre ID equals at genre ID. So you can hopefully see how this sequence is building up now. Our first data set, if I just click OK on this one, if I go back to the genre list data set, the very first one, the one that sits at the top of the entire sequence, this one has no where clause. This is not filtered or affected by any other parameter. The certificate list data set has one single where clause, one, sorry, a single where clause with a single filter in it, a single condition where the genre ID is equal to the genre that I've selected. The next one in the sequence is the director list, which has two filters in the where clause, where the genre ID is this and the certificate ID is this. And then the final uh, drop down list data set, film list, if I look at that data set properties, that one's got three filters in the where clause, director ID, genre ID and certificate ID. So you can see the, the building up of this sequence. One final thing, I'm just going to change the, uh, the arrangement of these. I think it probably makes more sense now if I insert a new row at the bottom and then oh, I should have just inserted a new row above the director and then drag certificates to sit below the genre. If I then run the report, if I now select the horror genre, I can find that the certificates I'm accessing only provide me with the 15 and 18 certificates. Oh, PG as well, apparently. Interesting. Um, you can see that I've got the same problem we had before, lots of duplicates of the same certificate. And that's because currently the data set which populates that list is selecting all of the films in the horror genre. So back into the design view, the final change we can make, I can right click the certificate list data set and choose data set properties. And then just add the distinct keyword to make sure I only see the unique certificate IDs and certificates. If I then click OK and then run the report, I can select the horror genre. I see just three certificates in the list. Let's go for the PG certificate and see what that gives us. And then a director. Let's go for James Whale and then ah, Frankenstein. I can view the report and there we go. So there we go, there's the details of setting up a cascading parameter sequence to make your users' lives easier. Always remember though that your users will never thank you for this no matter how much effort it took you to create, but they will certainly blame you if it ever goes wrong. So just to wrap up the video, I'm going to go back to the table design and just add in a few of these extra details we included at the start of the report. Um, so I'm not going to cover anything more to do with uh, cascading parameters. So if you're going to leave at this stage, if you're not interested in the table design, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. 
If you are sticking around, let's head back to the design view and we'll start by splitting this title cell into a header row and a detail row. So I'll select that cell first and then hit the split button on the toolbar so I get the title cell in a, in a separate header. I'll just apply the same formatting to that cell as the other cells on the same row. And then in the detail row, in the film column, I'm going to start by selecting the release date field. I'm just going to change the formatting of that cell so that it's not in bold. And then I'm going to click into the cell just so that I can add a bit of extra literal text in front of the placeholder for the release date field. So I'm going to type in the literal text release date followed by a colon and a space. While I'm here, I'm going to select the placeholder for the release date and format that as a date and also make it italic, I think. So if I run the report now, we'll see that, annoyingly, I've got to go through the sequence to select um, some uh, some films and some, some genre and some certificates and director and then some films. But eventually, when I get there, we will have the release date of those films. So what I want to do now is just add in some more values on different rows. Let's head back to the design view again. And then I'm just going to click back into the cell, click at the end of that bit of text. I'm going to switch off the italic formatting and then I'm going to hit enter. Actually, let me just switch off the italic formatting now. There we go, that's better. And then I'm going to type in, let's see, what's the next value? I'm going to type in run time followed by a colon and a space. And then I'm going to drag the runtime minutes field into that position in the cell. Now it's quite important that I have the flashing text cursor visible in the cell there. So I can drag, sorry, the runtime minutes field and drop that at the end of that line. And then I can hit enter again and I can type in, let's go for Oscars and then another colon. And then I can drag the Oscar wins field to the end and then hit enter again and type in, let's go for certificate colon and then I can drag the certificate field back in there as well. I'll just select each of these placeholders and again make them make the font italic. And then one final little run through if we run the report. I'm going to select the science fiction genre. I'm going to select all of the certificates. I'm going to select Ridley Scott from the list. If we can scroll down far enough and quickly enough. Um, there he is. And then I can select all of Ridley Scott's films and see the extra details for each film sitting just below the film title. So there we are. We really are done with this system now. I think that's more than enough for one video. Hope you found that one useful. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.